Mars Incorporated, makers of America's most enjoyable candy bars, presents... Curtain Time! of the big new Mars Bar welcome you to Curtain Time. Judging from the size of the crowd in the lobby, we'll have another full house tonight. And here, eager to see the new play, is the well-known man about town, your host, Patrick Allen. Good evening. Well, Mr. Allen, may we have a word about tonight's play? It's a very amusing romance, John. You'll like it. But there's the overture... So we'd better hurry inside the theater for tonight's production of Curtain Time. Tickets, please. Thank you, sir. Seventh row center. Seat seven and eight. Thank you. Well, the lights will be dimmed in a moment, so let's glance at the program. Harry Elders and Annette Sargent, supported by the Curtain Time players... A star tonight in Ticker Tape Romance by Eric Arthur. Mr. Elders plays the part of Steve Manton, and Miss Sargent will be heard as Laura Raymond. Curtain time! There's the call for the first Curtain act time. of Ticker Tape Romance. The scene is one of the bigger restaurants. Seated at a table is an attractive young woman who has just finished eating. A waiter stands at her side. Will that be all, ma'am? Uh, yes, waiter. May I have my check? Here you are, ma'am. Uh, thank you. But, waiter. Yes, ma'am? Uh, what's this item here? 35 cents. That's coffee, ma'am. 35 cents for a cup of coffee? Yes, ma'am. But that's outrageous. Do you realize that the cost of living... Oh, never mind. I'll pay it. Oh, dear, I... Something wrong? Oh, waiter, this, this is dreadfully embarrassing. I... I don't seem to have any money with me. Oh, is that so? I must have left my coin purse in my other bag. Really, I'm I... afraid I'll have to get the manager, ma'am. Please wait here, ma'am. Well, don't worry. I won't run away. Well, pardon me, miss. I was sitting at the table right behind you. I couldn't help overhearing. Oh, well, yes, I... Don't be embarrassed. Same things happen to me. I've even washed dishes to pay for my dinner. Well, I appreciate your sympathy, You'd but... You better let me pay your check. It would be a pity to hide a pretty face like yours behind a pile of dishes. Well, of all... <laughs> all right, Sir Galahad. <laughs> Good. Uh, seeing that the manager is frowning his way over here, I guess I'd better accept your offer. Uh, what seems to be the trouble, madam? No trouble at all, old man. Can you break a 50? <laughs> oh, what? Uh, why, yes, of course. Then take the young lady's check out of this. Oh, I'm sorry, madam, if the waiter caused you any trouble. Oh, no, that's perfectly all right. But I still think it's outrageous to charge 35 cents for a cup of coffee. Oh, but our coffee is a special blend of the very best Guatemalan. It still isn't worth 35 cents a cup. Oh, but you see... This... Yesterday's closing market quotation on Guatemalan coffee was less than 5% higher than it was a year ago. Less than 5%. <laughs> It was really very nice of you. Oh, think nothing of it. I spent my spare time rescuing ladies in distress. <laughs> so I think I've seen you before. Oh, dear. And here I was beginning to think you were so original. Oh, but I mean it. I have seen you. You're Laura Raymond, the Herald financial columnist. Guilty as charged. I see your picture in the paper every day. Well, how on earth could you recognize me from that picture? But um, are you interested in financial matters? What makes you ask that? Well, if you read my column... Oh, I read all the columns. Uh, that's the Herald building up ahead. Yes, I see it. Of course, I particularly like your column. Well, thank you. You have a way of taking the dryness out of facts and figures. And, well, here you are. Well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. But I'm very grateful to you, uh, Mr... Uh... Steve will do. But how will I know where to send the money I owe you? Suppose I stop by for it tomorrow. Oh, I... Uh, well... That'll be fine. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Miss Raymond. Well, 
son. How'd you make out? Fine, Dad. She doesn't suspect a thing. I didn't even have to make an excuse to talk to her. Good, good. Uh, but you've got to be careful. Miss Raymond's got a shrewd head. And a pretty one. Uh, yes, but... Uh, this is strictly business. Oh, sure. sure. Uh, you've got to get her to play along with us until uh, this new stock issue is lost. Right. All we need is a boost in her column and we're on our way. Dad, I'll have her eating out of my hand in a month. You'll have to work quicker than that, Steve. Ivor said we got to get the stock bought up in three weeks. Okay. But, uh, Dad, are you sure this stock is all right? <laughs> Ivor says it's as strong as the Rock of Gibraltar. Are you sure you can trust Ivers about this? Trust Ivers? Why, he's been with the firm now over two years, Steve. I know, Besides, but... Besides, he showed me an accountant's report. The Hartley Corporation seems to be in excellent financial condition. Well, as long as it'll help business, I guess... Well, it's not as though you were asking Miss Raymond to do anything dishonest, Steve. No, a but... The publicity in her column will help us and help the people who buy stocks. They'll be getting a tip-off on a good investment. I understand. I understand. The question, of course, is... Uh, will you be able to get Miss Raymond to see it that way? Don't worry, Dad. I may not be much good around the office, but lady financial columnists are just my dish. You know, Steve, I really shouldn't have gone driving with you today. Why not? Don't you like the wide open spaces? Oh, I'm crazy about them. But, well, I hardly know you. For all I know, you might be, uh, well, anything. Hey, how'd you guess it? Uh, but you can call me Annie for short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, look at that view. You can see the whole valley. Yes, and there are more trees than you can shake a stick at. Would you mind stopping the car for a moment? Oh, I'd be glad to. Oh, look at that house down there. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Looks like a medieval castle. It also looks as though whoever lives there sure believes in getting away from it all. Talk about ivory towers. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a place like that? Oh, I don't know. It's too far away from people. I like to be in the middle of things. Well, I do too, but once in a while it's good to have some place where you can get away. Some place where you can sort of get a new slant on yourself. Well, maybe an ivory tower isn't so bad, so long as it's got its foundations in the ground. Well, it's funny you should say that. Hmm? Why? Because Thoreau practically wrote the same thing. <laughs> You mean I quoted Thoreau and didn't know it? <laughs> well, he said, if you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put foundations under them. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about that? I think it's good. Well, I'm laughing because this is the first time in I don't know how long that I've had a chance to talk about anything besides stock market quotations. You mean that being a lady financial expert has its drawbacks? Perhaps. But, you know, you haven't told me anything about yourself. I don't even know your last name. Well, is that important? Well, no, but... Well, I guess I'm the kind who likes to get the facts and figures. Very well. Uh, I was born on the 32nd of April, 1849, in a small log cabin I built with my own hands. Not having an axe... All right, right, all right. I I promise not to ask any more questions. (laughs) In that case, let me ask you a question. Yes, well, it's not exactly a question, either. It's it's more of a... Oh, dear. What's the matter? Oh, look at the time. I've got a deadline to make. Okay, Jane Arden, let's go. We can't hold up the presses. The curtain falls on the first act of tonight's curtain time play, starring Harry Elders and Leonard Sargent. And now, John Weigel. Last week, I told you for the first time on this program about the newest Mars confection. The big new 10-cent candy treat called Mars the Toasted Almond Bar. Tonight, I would like to tell you more about this big new Mars bar. For it is real news in the candy field. Never before in the history of the candy bar business has a new bar been bought in such volume as the big new 10-cent Mars bar. And no wonder, for every bite of this luscious candy treat is rich with the rare flavor of the extra-thick, specially blended pure milk chocolate coating. 
heaped high and packed with crisp whole toasted almonds, all over a snow-white nougat center that is creamy smooth and rich. For the finest quality candy bar of them all, try Mars, the toasted almond bar. <laughs> Call for the second act of Ticket Tape Romance. To help his father in a stock transaction, Steve Manton managed to meet Laura Raymond, financial expert of the Herald. But uh, so far, he has merely taken Miss Raymond for a ride in the country. Well, it's now the next day. Steve is with his father in the latter's office. Well, Steve, any development? She dad, don't rush me. I only met her two days ago. But Ivor says we've got to get some publicity in Miss Raymond's column. We'll get it. But we've got to have it within the week if it's going to do us any good. There's one stock, however, that will bear watching... Hello. How's the Wall Street whiz doing? Oh, hello. Hope you don't mind my busting in during office hours. Oh, no. How about lunch? Oh, not today. I- I'm too busy. I'm having something sent up. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, mind if I go ahead with my work? I'm way behind. No, no. Go right ahead. Care if I look over your shoulder? Well, I'm, I'm afraid you won't find it very interesting. Quite the contrary. I find it very interesting. I've always been fascinated by <coughs> figures. Uh, that is, numbers. <laughs> You know, I bet thousands of people read your column every day. Well, I certainly hope so. Ever get any letters asking for investment advice? Plenty. And believe me, I never put a word in my column about a stock unless I've checked and double-checked it. Hmm. You're the Sherlock Holmes of the ticker tape, huh? Oh, now, look. <laughs> I've really got to finish this column. Okay. But how about dinner tomorrow evening? Uh, tomorrow evening? Mm-hmm. All right. Good. I'll pick you up here at 5.30. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, let's see. Where was I? I have received many inquiries about Hartley Mines. I will have more information as soon as I can look into this new stock issue. In the meantime, my advice is to wait before you invest. Hello, Laura. Oh, Mr. Baldwin, I'll have today's column ready in a few minutes. Uh, okay, but say, uh, what's Steve Manton doing hanging around your office? Trying to pick up some expert advice for his father? Did you say Steve Manton? Sure, Walter Manton's son. I just saw him going out. You, you mean he's the son of Walter Manton, the investment broker? He isn't James Mason. And from the way he breezed out of here, I gathered he was a good friend of yours. Well, hardly. I, I only met him a couple of days ago. But doesn't Walter Manton have something to do with this new stock, Hartley Mines? Well, now that you mention it, I believe his firm is floating the stock issue. By the way, have you checked it yet? No, but I'm going to just as soon as I finish this column. Enjoy your dinner? I, yes, it was fine. It well, was... I... Uh, <laughs> what were you going to say? Oh, nothing important. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to ask you something. Something you might do for me. It wouldn't be about giving Hartley Mines a boost in my column, would it, Mr. Manton? Hartley Mines? Then... Yes, I know. Well, uh, I suppose Hartley Mines explains why you've been so nice to me these past few days. Laura, I... Uh... No ivory towers for you. You want to be right in there with the people. But what people? What do you mean? Mr. Matton, Hartley Mines is a phony. A phony? It's being floated through your father's firm by a man named Harry Ivers. Well, yes, but... Ivers was involved in a bogus stock issue in San Francisco five years ago. But, gee, I, I wouldn't have promised Dad that I'd try to get you... No, so, to... the whole thing was a put-up job, even the meeting in the restaurant. Well, I did intend to strike up a conversation with you, but I didn't know you'd forget your purse and it... 
Flora, you've got to believe And me. you thought you'd be so charming, I'd never dream of suspecting you. Flora, please. Well, if it's any consolation to you, you were very charming. Here's a dollar seventy-five cents for my dinner and fifteen cents for my share of the tip. Goodbye, Mr. Manton. <laughs> Dad, how could you do a thing like this to me? son, how was I to know that Ivers had an account that faked those reports? A fine thing, getting me to play up to a swell girl like Laura Raymond. No wonder she thinks I'm a heel. Now, don't go blaming yourself. Okay, but... I should have checked on it myself. Sure, but how was I... I never thought Ivers would turn out to be a crook. Yeah, it would serve us right if we all wound up in jail. Well... We haven't sold any of the stock yet. Fortunately, we could call the whole thing off. Uh, who'll call what off? Oh, hello, Harry. I, Ivers, I ought to... What's the matter? What's everybody so jumpy you about? You know what's the matter. Hartley Mines is a phony, and so are you. Trying to get my father to swindle innocent people. Are your father's old enough to know what he's doing. Why, you... Steve, please. Let me handle this. Oh, all right. Just leave Mr. Ivers and me alone. Okay. And let me know if you need any help. I gather your son wasn't very successful with Miss Raymond. She found out about Hartley Mines, Ivers. Oh, she did? Look, Ivers, the sooner we part company, the better. I'll overlook what you tried to make me do. Oh, don't be a fool, Manton. We've still got a chance to make a lot of money out of this thing. Oh, we have? Yes, publicity in Laura Raymond's column would have helped, but we can do without it. There's only one difficulty. And what's that? Well, now that she knows about Harvey Mines, she's liable to blow the whole thing up in our faces by exposing us in her column. Not us, Ivers. I don't want anything more to do with it, or with you either. Manton, if we split up now, I take the estate investments with me. Whatever business you brought into the firm, you can have. I just don't want your name connected with mine. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. Now, your son bungled things pretty badly with Miss Raymond, but there's always another way. <laughs> Look, Dad, at her hotel, they say Laura hasn't been in her room for three days but now. But didn't they tell you down at the Herald office that Miss Raymond was out of town? Yes, but I still don't think she'd have gone off like that, not without saying a word. Well, from what you told me, she said plenty the last time she saw. She'd hardly bother to tell you she was going away. Dad. What is it? Ivers. Well, he was probably afraid Laura would expose him and the whole Hartley stock fraud in her column. Well, you think he might have... By... George, I just remember. Before Ivers left, he said something about there being another way to get Miss Raven's cooperation. He said, well, why didn't you tell me that before? But Steve, the whole thing's ridiculous. Ivers would There's no it. telling what a man like Ivers will do, not if there's enough money involved. And if he's harmed her in any way. Harmed her? Oh, Steve, I, I didn't know it was like that. I'm crazy about that girl, Dad. So I see. And I'm going to find her if I have to turn the whole town upside down. Before we bring you the third act of tonight's curtain time play, starring Harry Elders and Annette Sargent, here is John Weigel. Tonight, Mars Incorporated sponsors the second in a series of six weekly word-building contests on this program. First prize each week will be... $1,000. Second prize... $200. Eight weekly prizes of... $25 each. And 20 prizes of... $5 each. Each week will be a separate contest. And now, this week's contest. List all the three-letter words you can make from the letters in the phrase... Mars the Toasted Almond Bar. I know you want to write that down, so I'll repeat it. Mars the Toasted Almond Bar. Mail your entry along with two wrappers from the big new 10-cent Mars Bar to Curtain Time, 919 North Michigan Avenue, Chicago 11. All entries must be the original work of the entrant. Each entry must be made under the name of the entrant, and each person may submit only one entry each week. Entries for this week's contest must be postmarked before midnight Thursday, October 16th. 
any three-letter word found in the latest edition of Webster's new International Dictionary is acceptable. All entries become the property of Mars Incorporated, and the decision of the judges is final. In case of ties, duplicate prizes will be awarded. Winners of this week's contest will be announced on Curtain Time, October 25th. Remember, all entries must be accompanied by two wrappers from the big new Mars bar. So if your dealer happens to be out of Mars bars, ask him to order some for you. His wholesaler can supply him very quickly. You will enjoy every taste of Mars, the toasted almond bar. For you will find each bite rich with the luscious combination of the extra-thick pure milk chocolate coating, packed with crunchy, fresh, whole toasted almonds, and a soft, creamy, smooth nougat center. For the finest quality candy bar of them all, try Mars, the toasted almond bar. Remember, list all the three-letter words you can make from the letters in this phrase, Mars, the toasted almond bar. And be sure your entry for this week's contest is postmarked before midnight next Thursday. There's the call for the third act of Ticker Tape Romance. When Laura Raymond discovered the start Steve Manton's father was promoting was no good... She told Steve just what she thought of him. But both Steve and his father were innocent of any wrongdoing. And later, when Steve tried to get Laura in order to tell her this, he couldn't find her. Suspecting that something's wrong, he's now in the office of the editor of the Herald, the paper Laura works for. But, Mr. Baldwin, you ought to have some idea of where she is. All I can tell you, Mr. Manton, is that Laura's columns have been coming in on schedule. But uh, has she ever done this before, just picked up and gone off without telling anybody? Sure, and I don't kick as long as she meets a deadline. I see. Or as always said, she can only stand the city a few months at a time. But there must be some reason why she... Say, those columns she's been mailing in, where are they postmarked from? Well, who's got time to read postmarks? Here's some of the envelopes on my desk. Let me see. Help yourself. Little Falls, Appleton, Hedgemere, Marshall. Uh, she must be making a motor trip, huh? Uh, either that or these columns are deliberately being mailed from different towns. And those towns aren't very far away. Say, what's on your mind? Kidnapping, Mr. Baldwin. Kidnapping. <laughs> Look, Mr. Rivers, uh, how much longer we got to stay out here with the boys in the beach? What's the matter, Rocky? You're being paid enough, aren't you? Well, it ain't that. Uh, this country life gets me down. I ain't used to all this fresh air. Well, we'll be leaving very shortly. Yeah? And what are we going to do with the day? Miss Raymond will be taken care of, Rocky. You don't mean it. Uh, we're uh... going to take Miss Raymond for a trip. Uh, for a health, of course. Oh, a one-way trip, huh? And Miss Raymond, unfortunately, knows too much about Hartley Mines and about me. That's like I always said. It don't pay for a dame to be too smart. Well, guess I better go and have a look-see at the car. Here's the latest column, Mr. Ivers. It's due at the Herald tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. Well, aren't you going to read it? Perhaps I've written a secret message between the lines. I'm very adept at discovering codes, Miss Raymond. Look here. Aren't you afraid that when I don't show up at the office, my editor will start investigating? All he'll find is that you left your hotel uh, for a brief vacation. Is that so? Yes. As long as he keeps receiving your columns in the mail, he won't get suspicious. Uh, we found out that you're in the habit of taking such vacations. I suppose this we you refer to means Walter Manton and his son, as well as you. Oh, no. The Mantons preferred to withdraw from the Enterprise when they found out certain facts. What? Then Steve, I mean, Mr. Manton's son, didn't know about this? No. It's any consolation to you, he didn't. Mr. Ivers, how long do you intend to keep me here in this medieval dungeon? Dungeon? Well, I went to a lot of trouble to fix up this old country house for you. I'd hardly call it a dungeon. In my business, I'm used to facing facts. I overheard you and Rocky discussing my... my future just now. Oh, did you? Well, then it's hardly necessary to say more. Oh, yes, it is. I know your kind. If people get in the way of your plans, you just step over them. 
Well, you won't step over me as easily as you think. Uh, the fact remains, however, that our plans have been made. Uh, plans? Uh, seeing that you already know so much, you uh, may as well know the rest. What? Uh, you will continue writing your columns for another week. Uh, then you will suddenly become uh, indisposed. Why, you... Uh, your editor will receive a letter from you stating that your doctor has ordered a prolonged vacation. But you can't keep me away indefinitely. Somebody will suspect that Ooh, I... You were living alone at your hotel. Well, if I if I don't come back, the people at the hotel will be curious. There, there'll be an investigation. The police will... Uh, by the time the police discover your disappearance, Miss Raymond, it will be uh, too late. But Steve... We have no proof that Miss Raymond's being held anywhere against her will. Dad, Ivers checked out of his hotel just about the time Laura left hers. I tell you, it adds up. But if she were being kept away, wouldn't she try to let someone know? How? Well... She could hardly put an ad in the personal column. Hey! What's the matter? Her column. Where's today's Herald? Why, here. Well, Steve, what are you... Oh, here it is. Oh, do you think... She tried to put a message in there. Well, she's clever enough. She might get away with it without anybody suspecting her. Well, well, well is there anything in it? Uh, nothing in the first paragraph. Oh, I'm sure if Ivers has anything to do with this, he's watching her columns like a hawk. Dad, listen to this. What? Investing in the stock market with insufficient funds is like eating an expensive meal and finding out that you left your pocketbook at home. That proves it, Dad. It, it proves what? That she's in trouble. She's referring to the day in the restaurant. Well, baby, but... but can't you see? Ivers would never suspect that. Well, it doesn't sound like what you believe to me, Steve. But nobody'd know what it meant except me. Well, even if you're right, we still don't know where she is. Just you wait. She'll tell us. We've got to keep reading Laura's columns. <laughs> Dad, listen to this. Laura's column? Yes. Mm -hmm. When one has lived in an ivory tower of stock market quotations and ticker tape, one misses a great deal. Because no matter how comfortable ivory towers may be, they are lonely places isolated off the main highways of companionship. Steve, what in heaven's name does that mean? It means this. I took her out in the country for a drive. Yeah? We stopped near some kind of an estate with a house built like a castle. You could just about see it from the road. And I remember I made some crack about it being an ivory tower. Where was it? Near Hedgemere. Hedgemere? Yes. Why, Ivers had some real estate holdings near Hedgemere. He did? Yes, and one of them was an old castle-like mansion. It had been vacant for years. Well, if my hunch is right, it isn't vacant now. Then you think Ivers may be holding her there? Unless I'm completely off the beam, Dad, that's what those columns add up to. Huh. Come on, we're going to have a look at some of Mr. Ivers' real estate. This is Ivor's place, all right, Steve. I recognize it from the pictures you showed me. Well, I'm sure it's also the place Laura and I saw from the road that day. It's just... Shh. Somebody's coming. It's hiding in the bushes. Come on. Right. Mr. Ivor, do let go of me. A little faster, please, Miss Raymond. Uh, the Rocky's waiting for us in the car. You'll never get away with this. Uh, but why not? We have your farewell letter in your own handwriting. Which I wrote with a gun at my head. You were the people you represent... Think of everything, don't you? Not quite everything, Laura. Oh, Steve. Oh, why, you... Oh, God, he's reaching for his gun. Oh, Steve. Good work, son. Are you all right, Laura? Oh, Steve. The columns you did catch on. Yes. And everything's all right now. We can just... Oh, no. I forgot. What? Rocky's still around someplace. Who's Rocky? Ivor's henchman. He's very tough and... Dad, you stay here with Laura and watch Ivor's. Sure, but... Oh, Steve, what are you going to do? I'm taking Ivor's gun, and then I'm going out and round up this Rocky character. Enjoy your dinner, Mrs. Madden. It was wonderful, Mr. Madden. Good. But I see they still charge 35 cents for a cup of coffee. That's right, darling, but... Uh-oh. Oh, what's the matter, Steve? Well, uh, speaking of money, uh... Yes? I, uh, left my wallet home. Oh, no. <laughs> You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this time you'll have to pay the check. Oh, of course. I'll be... Oh, dear. Now, oh, what is it? 
Well, I, I don't seem to have my purse with me. You, you don't? Oh, and here comes the waiter with the check. Okay, just leave him to me. But what are you going to tell him? That 35 cents is still too much for a cup of coffee, and then I'm going to roll up my sleeve. Oh, Steve, don't hit him. Hit him? <laughs> Darling, I'm just getting set to wash dishes. Peterson, Don Gallagher, George Caesar, and Clifford Souvere. The Curtain Time music is arranged and conducted by Bert Farber, and the entire production is directed by Harry Holcomb. Next Saturday, Curtain Time will present an exciting mystery entitled X Marks the Spot. And now I'll join this gay theater crowd as it leaves the merchandise mart. Many on their way to the glamorous after theater spots here in Chicago. Until next week, then, this is Patrick Allen reminding you of your date every Saturday, same time, same station, when we will again present... Curtain Time! Each week, Mars Incorporated brings you two great shows over NBC. On Monday night, be sure to hear Dr. IQ, the mental banker. And next Saturday, be with us again for Curtain Time and another big Mars Bar Contest. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.